All right, tearing into the centrifugal clutch system on the King Quad 750. This is gonna be similar to the 450, the 500, the 700, and the 750. This is a 2013, like I said, uh, and I've showed you how to remove and replace and rebuild these clutches here. The front primary clutch, the secondary rear clutch. Uh, this would be the driven clutch, and this would be the drive clutch. And I've showed you how to replace that, that belt. I showed you the tools that you need. And now I'm going to dig a little bit farther into this clutch assembly here. If all you are doing is replacing your centrifugal clutch or your centrifugal clutch housing here, maybe a seal, maybe a gasket in behind here, you don't actually need to pull this engine to do this job. We are replacing the crankshaft. So while we're doing that, I'm just showing you how to uh, remove and replace a handful of other parts on this motor. If this video has been helpful, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Uh, we'll try to get listed below all the tools that we use on this job. Also, some of the part numbers for some of the parts that you'll need, the gasket kits, the piston kits. We offer a lot of those parts and tools in our uh, eBay store or our website. Check the links below for that. Thank you guys for watching. We've got a sensor here that we're gonna pull and it just held on by a little wire keeper there. We've got two four millimeter Allens to remove this sensor, loosen these up, and then we can get this removed. Just get it out of the way to start. Now to replace your clutch, you don't actually have to remove this sensor, uh, but I just need to get this done anyways. So removing this, and then after we get our centrifugal clutch pulled apart here, I'm also going to uh, tear into the bottom end here and get that crank shaft removed and pulled and replaced. So there's our sensor there. Cleaning that up, you've got a couple different brass areas here that'll make contacts. That'll send those to your indicators on your dash. We've got an O-ring that'll seal this sensor up. We'll pull that. Now we'll get into the eight millimeters all the way around here. I just like to use a 20 volt DeWalt 3 8 drive uh, with a 3 8 to a quarter inch adapter quarter inch extension here with an eight millimeter socket. All right, we got 12 bolts around the outside here. Looks like different lengths. Okay, so our two long ones go here and here. These are the two long eight millimeter bolts that we've pulled out and they're just slightly longer. There's your longer ones, there's your shorter ones. So not a lot of difference, probably three eighths of an inch. Set those aside, now we can grab a rubber mallet, tap up on this. You do wanna make sure don't tap too hard, don't break this housing here. And it shouldn't take much, there is a gasket in there that kind of seals things up, uh, but it really shouldn't take a lot of persuasion there to pull this cover. And there is your centrifugal clutch. There's your centrifugal clutch housing there. This is what I call the housing. I've done several other videos on how to remove this housing out of this case. I'm gonna let this uh, sit on the bench here and drain the oil out of it. Here's your gasket. Make sure you get that replaced every time you tear into this. Clean this up really well. Get a new gasket. Replace it. We've got your one-way bearing here. Now, you see if you order a stock one, which I would suggest doing, it'll, the arrow will be going clockwise. It'll also say outside here. Also have a green dot. This side does not have a green dot. So, Arrow going clockwise, says outside, it's got a green dot. That's how you know you're going the right direction. So you want to make sure that that is in good condition. Inspect that really well. Make sure there's no flat spots or any damage to that bearing. Set that aside. Pull our centrifugal clutch pack off of here. Okay, this is going to be a 15 16 impact here. Impact socket. Again, hang on to it with our hands. All right, so this is actually going to be reverse threaded. So to loosen this up, you're going to go clockwise. So not the same way you would loosen up most bolts, turn it clockwise. Your impact needs to be going clockwise to remove this bolt. All right, we've got that bolt removed. It is red thread locked on there. So it is actually uh, very, very hard to pull that off of there. Thankful we've got our half inch drive DeWalt here. That had allowed us to pull this off of here. Again, turning it clockwise. And the reason why a lot of times you know that, like this nut here is grooved. You can see on each ridge here, it's got a little groove in it. That tells us that we need to be turning it the other direction. So set that aside. 
Now we can remove our centrifugal clutch. All right, now that we have our centrifugal nut off of here, what you need is a puller that looks similar to this. I do also have these available. Click on the link below to make sure that you've got the right one for the right job. Uh, again, I've got countless people that tell me they've really screwed up the threads on their crank or their clutch because they have used the wrong puller. And then what you do is take, take this, thread this in then and pull it up just like your flywheel would be. Take and pull this up and this will actually just all come out like this. Your puller will come out with it and unthread your puller here and your clutch is off of there. And that's what your centrifugal clutch looks like. So if you have any questions on that, make sure and leave the comments below. Um, this washer is going to be in there. Here is your nut. Here, I'm going to keep that all together. You do want that to go back in that same order there. Don't forget about your nut there. So got the centrifugal clutch off. Now you guys have all the right tools for this job. Next, to split this crankcase, we're going to remove the piston off of here. Uh, our prop shaft we're going to disassemble. But first, I need to remove all the 8 millimeters.